Hey everyone, I'm a member of Team Tech Beast, and today in this video, I'll discuss briefly about cloud, NFV, and SDN. So, what comes in your mind when someone says, I'm working in cloud or I'm trying to build my career in NFV and try to understand what is SDN? What exactly are these terms? So, we won't be going like deep down how they are configured, how we deploy them. We'll just have a brief, small discussion on what exactly are they and maybe after end of this video you will have a good understanding of differentiation how these three terms exactly are different still they are like complementing each other so let's move on okay so what is cloud just one simple question what is cloud and what's answer it's just another person computer okay i am having my own computer i am having my own laptop but someone maybe in another part of India or another part of world, they don't have it. They don't own a computer, but they want to work on a computer. What they can do is either they purchase their own laptop, they, they set up their own system, or they can via internet access my computer. I just provide them my public IP and then they can access their own uh, my computer using their own setup, their own mobile phone, anything. So this is like a simple one shot answer. It's just another person's computer. Cloud is nothing like something, some data is in here and you are sharing it. It's not like that. It's just another person's resources which you are using. What exactly NIST say? So NIST is National Institute of Standard Te Telecommunication. It say cloud computing is convenient on demand network access to a shared pool of resources. So like I said, you want something conveniently on demand, you want to access something remotely, but if you are accessing something remotely, if you are using someone else computer, someone else data center, then obviously you will be sharing those resources, right? You are not owning them. So it's a shared pool of resources which are available on demand. That is like standard official definition of cloud. So what are key characteristics of cloud? When I say cloud, what are its key features? Like I said, it should be on demand self-service. So if, for example, you are using Google Cloud or you are, simple example, Gmail is an example of cloud. You are storing your mails, you are storing your information, you are using Google Drive, Google Drive to store your data. That is a kind of you are accessing cloud, right? Provided by Google. So it's on demand. You are doing everything on yourself, on demand. Whenever you want to increase that space, by default it's 15 GB, right? But if you want to increase that, you can do it by yourself. You don't need help of some technical engineer to do it for you. It's broad network access, so you can access it from anywhere. Resources are pooled. So like you, million of users are using same Google Drive, same data center. So it's pooled resources. Rapid elastic, okay, I suddenly need another 1 GB to be added. Then it configured quickly, right? You just purchase it from some portal and it's quickly allocated to you on your account. So it's rapidly elastic and then it's measured. Obviously, you cannot use like without any measurement. Someone is measuring it, okay? That's, that. These are the key characteristics of cloud. Then we move to public, uh, these types of cloud. So we have these three kind of clouds, public, private, and hybrid. So public cloud, like name suggests, I am a cloud service provider. I created my own data center and then I gave it to public. Like anyone across the globe can purchase computing resource from me. They can access my data center remotely using internet. Private cloud is something like I am a company, I want to set up my own system, my own, you know, secured files, I want to keep it internally, I will set up a private cloud. So inside my organization, someone with having all relevant authentication, only he can access that cloud data center, not like anyone across the globe can do that. Then hybrid is like combination of private and public. You can have some files in your public cloud, you can have some files in your private data center. Now offerings. So offerings are, if I am a cloud service provider, so what kind of offerings I am giving it to my customer? Whether I am giving infra as a service, so uh, I am giving them a cloud layer, 
uh, virtualization layer or I am giving them platform as a service, software as a service. These are like generic um, things I am telling you now. Maybe when we go in more videos, when I, when I show you how we deploy a cloud solution, we discuss more about what these, how we can differentiate within these offerings. Okay, so sounds good. What is problem? Huh? Cloud computing is very good thing. It is and it enables us to use networking resources which are somewhere in any part of any country, but we are accessing it remotely. But what is problem? Okay, this is my physical server. Let's uh, consider this scenario. We are having a physical server. We are putting an operating system on top of it and we are uh, running two softwares on this. Okay, this is how it works, right? Hey, but what if my client, uh, I am giving this physical server to my client. Suddenly he comes with the unique, not unique in today's scenario, but this proposition that I want to deploy another application, but that application or that software only supported by Linux, not Windows. So what I do, I cannot like install another physical server, another operating system for this particular requirement. I should be able to, you know, handle all these unique operating system OS application compatibilities I should be able to do that on a one single physical server right only then it works otherwise it's very expensive for me as well as client so this is my challenges with traditional deployments single server single operating system several application low infra utilization increased cost higher management it's very very tough to manage right so what is solution? Solution is virtualization. What exactly virtualization do? I have a physical server. Instead of putting OS, I put a virtualization software. And on top of that, I put operating systems, multiple operating system I can uh, run on same software, same physical server. And top of that, I can deploy any application which is like supported. So my soft software A is supported by Red Hat. I'll install a Red Hat OS. Software B is supported by Suzy Linux. Suzy Linux is here. So this is called virtualization. My single, same single physical server is now supporting multiple OS, multiple application. Client is happy. We are happy. So virtualization is a technique of pooling and abstracting the underlying physical resources. So like I said, physical resources, physical CPU, physical RAM, they are now pooled, they are now separated, they are abstracted to different operating system instead of one single OS to application mapping. Now they are having, we are having multiple OS, multiple application, everything is loosely coupled. There is no such thing like this particular resource is allocated or this particular resource is pinned to this particular operating system. It's not like that. Now, because ultimately, see, my physical server, my computer is what it's made of, CPU and RAM. If I am allocating my CPU RAM to multiple OS to support multiple applications, then everything is loosely coupled and that is what is called virtualization. So this is how virtualization actually helps in like complementing the solution of cloud computing. So cloud computing is a technology and what enables that technology to work in real world scenario, what actually complements that is virtualization. How is this different to NFV? NFV is, see, in IT cloud data center, we or any Google cloud example, just like I shared with you, you are dumping your files, you are dumping your data in someone else's computer. It's straightforward use case. But telco, telecom network or some big network architecture where we have multiple network equipments, we also want to virtualize that, right? We Every company wants to minimize their physical infra, put same application which earlier were running, running on different physical system. They want to run on single, single same physical hardware and top of that working as softwares. So wh what is that? That particular phenomena, that particular technology is NFV, Network Function Virtualization. So what Network Function Virtualization is? Same thing, we are having a physical resource, we are putting a virtualization layer and top of that we are running VNFs. VNF can be a virtual firewall, virtual router, 
anything we, we are running on the same physical server so instead of having sim separate physical server and separate physical router we are having same physical server on top of that we are running virtual appliance now each layer you can see we have three layers right virtualization layer vnfs oss bss layer each layer is in turn managed by a particular software nfvi vnfm nfvo orchestrator manager and infrastructure so we are not going in deep down like how they work what are their example how they are deployed but generic this whole three club together these all three components are term so what about sdn is it like another component of cloud or how does it fits in our nfv model which we discussed just now it is part of etsi mano solution what is it exactly so sdn basically software defined networking which is completely different concept it's not at all related to cloud it, we can use it stand alone we can use it as part of our nfv architecture we can use it part of any it cloud data center so what exactly it does is is say if you are from networking background you are well aware that if you have 50 to 100 routers and suddenly if your client wants to create new routes you have to do everything manually logging in each router or any uh, each switch and do changes if you are smart you can use maybe some backend scripting as well but still in modern like when we are com moving towards this more automation and orchestration based networking it's not a user friendly technology you you have to use something some common net management layer right so that's where sdn comes in picture now it decouples your data plane which is like normal packet forwarding done by any router and completely separate routing functionality so now my smart routers are changed to dummy router my router is not responsible for doing any routing it is only forwarding packets from packet a to packet b and the brain of comp this whole network architecture is put in one single controller which is like another device or another virtual machine any in any way any uh, or you can understand as a software which is managing all the routers so it is actually responsible for creating new routes deleting existing one creating new metrics and new qos values so everything is done by a single controller sdn actually is not a component of cloud but it's complementing cloud solution it actually enhances our nfv or cloud based architecture cloud based solutions so this is about cloud nfv and sdn if you have more doubts more information you can visit our official youtube channel or our official website techbeast.org stay in touch and keep looking for more videos we'll be posting it here bye